Hello, everybody. I'm back. Um, I thought this week it would be fun to deviate a little bit from the types of mythology that I've done so far on my channel, which has mostly been Greek. I thought we could do some Norse mythology today. So I know that some of you may be familiar with the Dolores Book of Greek Myth. That's what I know my school uses to teach our sixth graders about Greek myth. But what you may not be as familiar with is their book on Norse mythology. So that's what we're gonna be reading from today. It is the Delars book of Norse mythology by Ingrid and Edgar Perrin Delars. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. The first gods and giants. Early in the morning of time, there was no sand, no grass, no lapping wind. There was no earth, no sun, no moon, no stars. There was Niflheim, a waste of frozen fog, and Muspelheim, a place of raging flames. And in between the fog and the fire, there was a gaping pit, Genungagat. For untold ages, crackling embers from Muspelheim and crystals of ice from Muspelheim whirled around in the dark and dismal pit. As they whirled together, faster and faster, Fire kindled a spark of life within the ice. An enormous, ugly shape rose roaring from Genungaga. It was the first frost giant in year, first of the race of the Jotuns. At his side, a hornless ice cow came mooing from the pit. Together, Jotun and Cow lived on the rim of Genungaga. The Jotun did not lack for food. Four rivers of snow-white froth flowed like milk from the huge ice cow's udder. And Ymir drank and drank and grew to a towering height. As for the cow, she found plenty of food licking the salty brim of Genungaga. For a long time, there were only Ymir and the cat. Then Ymir fell into a deep sleep. While he slept, a male and a female Jotun came to life in the warmth in his left armpit. And a troll with six heads sprouted from his feet. These monstrous creatures grew quickly and had offspring of their own. They were all big and rough, and Ymir was the biggest and wildest of them all. The ice cow also brought about life. As she licked and licked, her tongue grew warm, for she had to lick hard to make enough food for Ymir and his brood. Then, under her warm tongue, a head of hair sprouted on the briny brim. And as she went on licking, a face appeared. The cow went right on licking. Shoulders and chest came forth, then legs, and at last out stepped a whole new creature. He was straight and quite handsome, not ugly like the Jotuns and trolls. He had a son who was even more handsome. And this son took for his wife a beautiful Jotun maiden. For it sometimes happened that an ugly frost giant would have a lovely daughter. She bore her husband three sons, who were so fair that radiance spread from them and lit up the darkness around them. They were the first of the great Aesir gods. Their names were Odin, Honir, and Lodir. Spirit will, and warmth. They were high and very holy, and they had the power to create a world. But before the three gods could begin to create, 
They had to get rid of the frost giant Emir. He had always been wild, and old age had made him worse. The three young Asir gods went against the age-old Yotun. They slew Ymir and pushed his huge hulk into Ginungagat. So much brine flowed from his wounds that it filled the pit and flooded over the rim. The cow and all Ymir's offspring were drowned, except for two, a very strong Jotun and his mate. They clambered up onto the ice floes and went to live on the wild outer shore of the sea made by Ymir's brine. The Asir did not punish them, and almost right away this ice-bound wilderness, Jotunheim, was teeming with their offspring. These uncouth Jotuns and trolls hated the Yesian for what they had done to their kinsmen. They watched as the handsome gods made a new world and raged among themselves. Okay, so that was the gods and giants. Um, I think I'm going to do the next one, so look at that. I will put them in a playlist for you so you will see them. The next one will be the creation of the world. So I hope to see you there.